on the last stream, uh, we were talking about uh, worker cooperatives or so-called cooperatives, where there is where shares are are part of the structure. Um, and so I was I was curious of um, if y'all have any thoughts about the situations where the workers who are also the owners have are, are part of this share share system, right? It's a corporation has a share system, and the workers have fifty one percent of the shares or fifty one percent of the vote at board of directors meetings, fifty one percent, and then other like investors they have the forty nine percent. You know what are, you know how does this what what have y'all seen about how this works out or what are, are there any benefits to this um, cons to consider or what are the what are the weaknesses or dangers of that? I haven't seen any any co-ops um, with those kind of numbers, but it really seems pretty high for the investors to have forty nine percent. That's really dangerous. They they could easily flip that to some kind of control. Um, I believe East um, um, Equal Exchange uh, had some um, investors, uh, but they didn't have voting power. They didn't have a lot of um, way that they could overturn that, the whole balance. And um, I haven't really heard of others that that have similar kind of structures, but that one really, really sounds a bit too much. I think something, uh, you know, much, much smaller would be more appropriate. Yeah, I mean, and the the standard, as Adwa said, is like what Equal Exchange has done with preferred shares. And there are many co-ops that have, you know, that offer preferred shares. Um, as a way to, you know, get equity from outside their members without having to get a loan. Um, but preferred shares, as Audra said, have no voting power and they pay, you know, they, they're not required to actually pay anything back. They're, a, they're called preferred shares because if there's money, um, you know, at the end of the year, that's, you know, excess is going to be distributed before it gets distributed to the members as patronage, it gets distributed to the preferred shareholders. They're preferred in that sense. They get paid out first. Um, but like with equal exchange, they have a target rate. And uh, the last time I read you know, there an article, you know, that they wrote about it. It was, I think their target rate was 6% per year. And, you know, if the business did bad and they didn't have as much money as they thought they would, they might not pay 6%. Um, although I think they'd always managed to hit their target. Um, but, you know, it's, but that's the thing they, it comes with no voting control. So the standard up until now, until recently anyway, has been outside investors get zero voting control, zero board seats, and that's because we one of our cooperative principles is independence and autonomy or autonomy and independence. Um, so that is, you know, having a board of directors that's 49 percent has been voted into that position by outside investors, by just people who have nothing to do with the co-op except putting money in that to me, we are now you're. 2%, right? I mean, if, if they had, if the investors had 3% more, they'd have a majority. And then we'd just be back at capitalism once more. Mm -hmm. So we're, you're 3% yeah. now back from capitalism. Like, no, this is, uh, this is not okay. I, yeah. I, 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 it's, um, and I mean, even like we didn't even, cause we didn't even have the conversation as whether or not investors should be allowed any voting share. Like, where is the, you should be given five percent, ten percent. Let them elect one board member of ten or something. Like it's right to nearly fifty percent. I mean, forty nine. Yeah. It's it is. It's fifty percent. It's half. Like well, let's yeah. not <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. Forty nine percent is half. Um, and so yeah, no, I think that's that's it, it's a problem. I it, I'm not a fan of it. I know there are. Uh, a couple of states with cooperative incorporation statutes that allow for this kind of thing. But I think we should really be pushing back on it. And um, yeah, it, it, but uh, it, it, 
could ramble on forever. I want to do like, you know, Chris asked, what's the it, argument in favor? Uh, I know the argument in favor is going to be, it's how you get money, right? For your co-op, you need financing. And so most investors, because they just want to take their big pile of money and make it into a bigger pile of money, they're not just going to, you know, give it to you with nothing for nothing in return or just, you know, the promise of maybe getting some money they want control just like in, because we live in America, that we live in a capitalist economy. And so that's why you make these, would make these concessions as a co-op. Um, and it, so yeah, th there's a whole lot more to unpack there, but I don't want to talk forever. Yeah. Yeah, that control thing is really serious. Um, when Equal Exchange did it, uh, the investors were churches and nuns groups who wanted to make a contribution, not to make money. <laughs> so, yeah, that's quite a long way. Um, and, and, and it sounds like, you know, some people who want to make money have discovered the cooperative and figured a way to try to turn it into something that they can benefit from when we have to be on guard against that. Thanks. Thanks for, uh, thanks for answering that curiosity I had. Cause, um, yeah, I, I saw it. I was, I was thinking about it recently. I saw it. We're, we're, I'm not pursuing it anywhere. I wouldn't pursue it anywhere, but, um, yeah, if I see it becoming a pattern here, um, it's good to have something like this recorded. <laughs> yeah. The last <laughs> one to you know, just slide someone's way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it, it, there's going to be more. I think you'll see more in Chicago, um, and we'll see more in other places as well. Like I said, it's there are already a couple of states. I think Wyoming is one of them with a really nasty co-op incorporation statute that basically allows for co-ops that look nothing at all like co-ops as we know them, um, just using, you know, keeping the same name. And so I think at some point it's going to get to where we have to be like co-op is not going to be good enough anymore. I mean, I would like to think that we'll be able to stop the, you know, worker co-op, even just worker co-op brand from being watered down so much where it doesn't mean much anymore. But the way things are going, you know, it, it, there's, a, you know, like Ajo said, there's a lot of big money people who seem to have discovered co-ops and maybe it's they've exhausted everything else. And so they're finally coming for us. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what. It, it, they're going to keep doing their thing and if they you know keep talking about their co-op stuff and and keep doing you know these 50 percent investor can owned quote-unquote co-ops it's it is going to get to a point where we're just going to have to be like we're going to have to come up with a new name or something <laughs> that like designates no this is the real ones right not one of those co-ops <laughs> right right yeah they're going to give co-ops a bad name um, something that they did in, I think, 2004 in Europe. And the ICA had to come out and, you know, say these guys are not really co-ops because they were really horrible to the workers. And um, so there was a whole movement even in the U.S. Federation of um, Worker Cooperatives to define what a worker co-op was so that these guys could not pretend to be worker co-ops. So we may have to go back to something like that, where we make it very clear what the difference is um, in a real worker, worker co-op or some corporation masquerading as a worker co-op, because that name has, you know, a lot of pull and people want to support worker co-ops now. And so they want to cash in on, on the hard work that the co-op movement has done to get people to be in solidarity with workers. And so they want to use it for their own benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, and, and I will say, like, I don't want to be just completely negative. Like, I can certainly imagine a situation in which you have one of these co-ops that's 50% investor owned and controlled. Um, and they start a co-op and they employ a bunch of people and they do, you know, have a business that makes money and provides, 
you know, jobs that are in better conditions and have better wages than your standard, you know, capitalist job working in, you know, low wage service sectors. Um, I, I can see that, that, you know, that would be a thing, but is that all we're going for? Is that, you know, should we not just be pushing for a 15 hour minimum wage in Medicare for all Then I mean, it, it do, you know, it's like, that's, it, it can be better than the really messed up situation that we have. That's the norm right now and still not be good enough, I guess is what I'm saying, at least um, from my perspective. So I don't want to make it sound like there's no possible way in which anybody could benefit from any of this stuff. You know, if it's not a, a, a real co-op or doesn't have, you know, in, in our view. Um, but still, I, I, it doesn't mean that it's, you know, they should come up with a different name for whatever there is they're doing and, and don't call right. it. Enough, right. Yeah, I think, you know, your point is we have to be very careful to make sure that it, it really is a cooperative and not something that a, corpor a corporation is going to use to just make more money and screw the workers in the end. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, just not live up to our ideals like. I mean, even like, even if it doesn't lie to the level of totally screwing people over and like, it doesn't have to get that bad to still be like, no, that's not cool. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, that's and, it's, and that's what I, you know, and, and there, there are lines to be drawn. There's, you know, no easy answers for a lot of this stuff because it all, I mean, they're, it, everything is, you know, always fuzzy, but we need to have the conversations at least so we can kind of agree where we all kind of think the line should be rather than just not have the conversations at all. And then somebody can just go and it's like, well, my line's like way out here. And if it's completely different than the consensus, I, who even knows? Cause we never even had this conversation. So, you know, I'm all about just being more open about all this stuff. Um, I know not everybody agrees with me on that, but, um, we're the ones with the live stream, so I guess too bad. <laughs> have have the conversations and get the phone calls. Right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right.